I wanted to do a demo of um, Coder, specifically some of the Coder features that I like the most and um, some use cases that I wanted to show off as well. So let me make myself a little bit smaller here. And um, the first thing a user sees when they drop into Coder is the workspaces page. Now I have several workspaces here and you can think about a workspace as um, a place that a developer goes to write code. So without Coder, this would typically be your local machine. You would have different tools installed on your local machine and programming languages such as Python, um, VS Code, as well as a bunch of different libraries and frameworks and your source code would be cloned on your local machine. Now, all those things are kind of automatically handled for you um, in the workspace with the one exception being in Coder, you can actually connect using a local editor. So say you use VS Code or PyCharm or um, IntelliJ, you can still use that local editor with all of your keyboard shortcuts, but then connect in remotely to your Coder workspace and access the files, languages, tools you have um, pre-installed there. Now, another cool thing about this like workspaces page is that some of these workspaces are stopped. And um, that's kind of important more from like an administration perspective, meaning that it both can be used to save on cloud cost because these are running servers in a data center somewhere. So that costs money, as well as ensuring that all developers are kind of on the same page and using an ephemeral um, environment that includes all the latest tools and frameworks. So it means that a developer can't kind of go in and, and, and change too much. But I'll explain a little bit about how that, that all works in a second. Um, first, let me go ahead and start up one of my, or actually let's create a workspace. So this goes into the second coder feature that's pretty important, which are templates. Um, templates are typically managed by a small team of coder admins. This is typically a DevOps or a platform team. So the end user, the developer, typically isn't creating templates. Maybe they'll modify them if they like have specific use cases or maybe they want to spin up a new use case in coder, but it's kind of the platform team's job to create templates for different use cases. So I organize my templates by use case, a common one we see with Coder is data science. Um, specifically, data scientists need to quickly get into notebooks, and typically it spends takes a lot of time setting up their local environment with all the tools they need, as well as um, cloud workspaces such as, as Coder can offer developers GPUs or increased hardware that they typically wouldn't be able to get on their local machine because all this would be running in a cloud or in an on-prem data center somewhere. Um, another use case is dev containers. Um, Dev containers is a standard format that by Microsoft that lets developers define what they need in a development environment, meaning they need Python, they need Go, they maybe need specific libraries, they need VS Code extensions, and a developer can basically come to Coder, give it a dev container um, or, or a Git repo that supports a dev container, and then they'll automatically be in a workspace that's configured with everything they need. Um, Kubernetes is another common use case. A lot of our customers have... Um, cloud native environments where they're deploying onto, but they're still editing their code on a local machine. So they're forced to use something like um, Minikube or Microkates on their local machine or Docker Compose, all of which aren't exactly a good replica of the production environment. Or the, the other option is they can only develop one service at a time, then they have to deploy it out onto a cluster, wait for the image to build, wait for the pipeline to complete, only then to test their code. So it turns the feedback loop of like typical development, which is seconds into minutes or sometimes even hours to then deploy and, and test your code. So with Coder, um, the, the alternative is the developer is kind of dropped into a Kubernetes cluster where they can develop inside of a Kubernetes namespace or maybe just a pod um, and preview their changes in an environment that has close parity to production. Um, the final use case is a virtual machine. Now, a virtual machine is a little bit different than a container in some of these other use cases in that it can be ephemeral, but it could also just be persistent. So a developer can get into a blank virtual machine and then set it up just like they'd set up a new computer. So that means they have access to all their tools, files. Uh, they don't have the benefit that every developer is on the same page, but it does give them a much more powerful um, workspace or perhaps a more secure workspace than that they would get locally. Um, meaning that you could attach a GPU to the virtual machine. It could run inside of a secure network that typically the developer's laptop wouldn't be in. So it can have access to data sets and um, the networking speeds of the virtual machine also might make operations like a Git clone a lot faster because the Git repository lives really close to where the, the virtual machine is. So in this case, this is spinning up a VM in AWS, but um, Coder supports all different clouds and on-prem data centers. And I'll explain kind of why that matters later. So um, let me actually get started with the, the dev container example. And let me go ahead and create a workspace. So in my workspace, I'll give it a name, my workspace. Two. I'm just going to put two because I don't know if I have 
uh, I'll do three just because I, I don't know. Um, I don't want to make something that I already have. And it's also asking me to pick a starter project. Now, these are parameters that the coder admin, so the, the platform team, has chosen that they want to make available to me. I can choose these different languages. And you can kind of think of these as perhaps good starter templates or, or guardrails um, for if someone needed to like spin up and start a new project. The, the other option is I can specify a custom repository URL. So this gives me a good opportunity to explain um, dev containers. So let me open this in a new window, should show up to the side here. Um, now this is the awesome dev containers repo. This is all in public GitHub, but what our, a lot of our customers would do is they would have an internal um, Git, so like GitHub Enterprise, where they have these different repos with dev containers. You can imagine that an existing repo, maybe a very large um, mono repo or a microservice, could also have dev containers um, added into there. But I'll explain exactly what that means. So let's go into um, Ruby because we don't have Ruby as an option here. And we'll go into try out developer containers Ruby. Actually, I'm not sure if this one's gonna work with my demo. So let's do Rust. Great. So here's a um, Rust example. Um, and the, the Ruby one could work. I would just have to modify the template a little bit. Um, now here's here's a Rust example, and what makes this repo compatible with dev containers is there's this .dev container folder in the Git repository, and in here this is basically the the format for a dev container. This one's quite simple. It's just saying we want to start with this Rust starter image. Now again, this is a um, public registry, but again, this could be a private registry, and Coder can authenticate to that anywhere. So you can kind of lock down what. Um, dev containers people can use by only giving them access to specific registries or specific like locations for, for Git repos. So that's all entirely possible. Um, so let me go ahead and copy this repo URL. I'm going to avoid the tree main because it's just asking for the URL. Um, I could make an example of this that also supports a, a path to dev containers as well. Uh-oh. Cool. My... I'm in a VM and it froze up for a second, but I think we're good now. Um, so try, let's set Rust. And let's go ahead and click Custom Repository and create the workspace. So what Coder is going to do now is um, it's running Terraform to actually spin up the, um, to spin up this Kubernetes pod. So, or like in this case, it's a, it's a Docker container, but it's using Terraform to spin this up in a, um, in a remote server somewhere. So because Coder uses Terraform. That's how we're able to support so many different clouds, on-prem data centers, everything, everything like that. So let me go ahead and close this out. Um, what's what's happening now is now that this um, resource has been spun up. In this case, it's just spinning up a container somewhere. It's cloning this Rust repo. It's detecting that it needs to get this Rust image. So it's going ahead and pulling this Rust image for development. I'm going to go ahead and pause, and we'll just resume when this um, is all done. Cool. So that took about um, a minute and a half or so, but it can be significantly faster. Well, A, this was the first time I was downloading this Rust image, um, so that'll be saved. And then I also have this set up with a um, cache. So in the future, future kind of workspace starts will be a lot faster. Cool. So here I'm in my workspace, and I was explaining that it's spinning up a Docker container. So that's what this template's doing. And this isn't a Docker container on my local machine. This is a Docker container on the um, machine that's running the coder server. But um, what we typically see our large customers do is instead of just spinning up a Docker container, it'll spin up a Kubernetes pod, or it could spin up a virtual machine, or whatever kind of infrastructure you're comfortable with, it can spin up on your own cloud or, or infrastructure. And that's all possible with, with Terraform. Cool. I, I get some logs of the things that we're running. Here's where the image was being built. And it's also starting um, code server, which is this web IDE right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click this. It should open. And um, this is a fully browser-based um, development experiment, experience. Excuse me. Um, so it cloned my repo in here, VS Code Remote, try Rust. Let's go into dark mode so that it's a little bit easier on the eyes. And um, if I type Rust um, or Cargo, maybe. I, I have Rust installed. So I have all the tools I need to get started. I have the repo cloned, and I can get go ahead and get started developing. Um, now, like I was mentioning earlier, though, not everyone likes to interact with a web-based IDE. Some people prefer to use something like VS Code Desktop or even IntelliJ, which I'll, I'll get into um, in, in a second. But this, this VS Code Desktop experience is um, 
is pretty magical. So I can just click this button here. And this is actually the first time that I've configured VS Code. So I get to show you the, the full flow of what it's like. So I'm on a Linux VM. I, I have VS Code installed, but I haven't configured it at all to talk to Coder. It doesn't even know what, what Coder is. So I'm gonna go ahead and click open VS Code. It's um, opening VS Code here. It has my, my i3 config. I was messing around with my VM earlier. Um, it's asking for a password. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause and just sort out some of these new VM things. Okay, cool. Now that that's sorted, um, it's doing a few things down here. It's um, installing the coder binary. It's um, installing this VS Code remote extension. And um, it's going ahead and connecting automatically to my workspace. So I didn't have to do anything, really. It automatically downloaded two extensions for me. I, of course, gave VS Code permission to do so. And um, now I'm connected into my workspace. So as we can see, I have the same file system here. I can open a, a terminal and compare. So I'm in root workspaces. And just, just to show you, this isn't my like local terminal. I can open one over here. This is what my like local terminal looks like. And um, I have Cargo installed too. So this is my desktop VS code that's automatically connected to my workspace and I can get started developing. And the next time I want to connect to my workspace, I don't even have to open the Coder UI. I can just go into Coder here. Um, let me just go ahead and reload this window. I can go into the Coder UI here and connect directly into my workspace. 